I don't know precisely what my legal limitations are or what uh, what the ramifications of this could break. But I do know that I feel that I, I should bring this information to all of you and to all of the competitors, to all of the wrestlers around the country. So at, at this time, uh, we're going to take a look at uh, this piece of film. It's very short in duration, but uh, I think it becomes rather self-explanatory. Let's take a look at it right now. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification bell so you never miss an update. Well, number two is Gordon Soley, the Dean of Pro Wrestling. And I will supplay anybody who says otherwise. <laughs> well, I can tell you is that's the man as complex, uh, as controversial, uh, and as brilliant, really, as he is. What a great number two. Yeah, Gordon, again, like I, I've said this whole episode, for me, there's a veritas and a reality that comes with that sports journalist style of match calling. And Gordon nailed that. He made it seem like a real legit sport every time, a competition with a prize at the end for the athletes in the match. What Vin Scully was to baseball, what Pat Summerall was to professional football, Gordon Soley was to professional wrestling in that he took a sport and brought it into your living room and made you believe. And where baseball and football are different sports entirely, Gordon Soley's job was one million times harder than Scully's and Summerall. He made you believe that what you were watching was a true athletic competition, and that's a gift, that's an art, and that's a talent that you can't buy, you can't go to school to learn, and every announcer in this sport, no matter what wrestling company, no matter what level they're at now, owes a debt of gratitude to Gordon Soley for exposing the sport to the masses and for teaching us how to do our job and do it better. We can only hope to aspire to the standard that he set. Also, his, his use of the word souple always set him apart. Great to play by Jack Frisco. The match. And, uh, brother, look at this. He has got this man suspended in a high vertical souffle. There's 265, 270 pounds up in a high vertical souffle. And it is over, my friend. I mean, the first time I heard it, I'm like, what the f*** is this guy talking about? And all of a sudden, yeah. like, maybe he knows more than everybody else. He's got him up. High vertical souffle. To go back to Jim Ross, he cites him as his most significant influence of his career. No one had a bigger impact on my announcing career than Gordon Soule. So that's kind of uh, the show what kind of importance. If everyone's out there, if you want to b*** and say, well, JR should have been number one or whatever, consider this. You know, our number two, Gordon Soley, is, is cited by Jim Ross saying that was the most significant influence on his career as an announcer. Gordon's unique style through the, through the years, he developed a style where he, 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 kind of like in a doctor's office, listening to all of these uh, uh, descriptions of the human anatomy, if you will, and... Uh, Gordon had a very unique way of, of kind of weaving that into his play-by-play -play commentary. Of course, I really enjoyed Gordon's interviews through the years because he could be so dramatic in saying absolutely nothing after somebody made the most absurd proclamation that would ever come out of a wrestler's mouth. Uh, somebody would say something to the effect that uh, this would be the last match for Eddie Graham or whatever the case may be and Gordon would just stare the individual down. It was very dramatic, very very effective. I, I picked up some of his things through the years and utilized them. Not that uh, I would ever knock off any of Gordon Soley's stuff, but he he was a uh, truly a national treasure in professional wrestling broadcasting. Gordon Soley was just great, and um, you know he came up with the uh, wearing the crimson mask. Both men staggered. Both face now has become a, a crimson mask. I do know on Florida Championship Wrestling or Championship Wrestling in Florida, he'd always say, so long from the Sunshine State. Um, I once want to double check if he said that from the Peach State when he'd done Georgia Wrestling, because it seemed like he would do that when he'd done that sometimes when there was maybe 82, 83, somewhere in that time frame when they jumped over a little bit when he was doing both Georgia and uh, Florida. Now next week, Gordon Soley saying, so long from the Sunshine State. Gordon Soley, man, like you said, the Dean 
uh, man, he did that championship wrestling in Florida, and uh, and he 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 worked everywhere. You know, I would imagine on our list of listeners, um, Gordon Soli might be on their number their number one. You know, oh yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So, uh, anything else about Gordon there at number two? Uh, no, no. It's I. I think you know for people who don't know Gordon Sully, all I'm gonna say is you need to go find some matches. I mean, they're not gonna be as energetic because uh, Gor- Gordon was probably drunk when he was calling <laughs> some of those. Uh, uh, the was free and you were there, so like, that's beside the point. But he is going to have a temper and a tempo and a style that just lends legitimacy to every match he called. Yeah. And it was just one of those things that I was a big fan of his back in the day. And, you know, like I said, it's just in that style that he used and our number one is going to use him, Bob Cottle, there is a veritas and a gravitas and a gravity that comes with the style of calling sports that the way they did it. I'd like to give you just a small lesson, if I may. Oh, please go ahead. All, All right. right. You're young enough that you probably got a bad batch of Clearasil on right now, but I want to point something up to you. There's only one thing, my friend, that you're ever going to take to your grave, and that's integrity. You can't take money. You can't take property. All you can take is your reputation and your integrity. If you think for one moment that I would be employed by you to foster what you seem to believe in as a manager in professional wrestling, basically a leech, a parasite, Living off the fine athletic bodies of wrestlers, sir, you're sadly mistaken. And as far as I'm concerned, if you have anything to do with this show in an ownership position, I'm gone. Am I clear?